Automation, a word that can draw many different reactions. Fear, anger, joy, complete and total ambivalence, to name a few. Perhaps automation sparks some little childlike hope in your heart. The dream of a future where you and everyone you love is left to bask in a utopian paradise. Worry, worry free. Where's the other camera? But a world like that would be a world with next to no jobs. A world where a long maintained economic structure is gone. What would that kind of world be? Well, at the rate we're going, we're gonna soon find out. What's the state of automation right now? Where will it get? And where, oh where, did it start? I'm your host, Dr. Science, and this is Automation, innovation that excites. Living in the 21st century where the rate of automization is destroying all middle class and lower class jobs and how we can put up with that. While past humans used various little tools to help partially automate some jobs, like weaving cloth, or printing books. It truly was with the Industrial Revolution, lasting from the 1760s to the 1840s, that sparked the rapid and widespread development of automation. But was this era of technological explosiveness really the beginning of humanity's dream to make hunks of metal that could bake brownies, or mechanical buddies that can walk our dogs? Nice. Right, sit down. This part's gonna be pretty chill. <sighs> okay. That's Talos, baby. In ancient Greek mythology, Talos was a massive sculpture fashioned from bronze by the god Hephaestus. He was charged with protecting the island of Crete, or Crete, and though he looked like a human, his objective was clear, absolute, and you could say, he was a machine. Talos is a great example of an automaton, a machine that imitates the behavior or form of a human or animal. Automatons are actually quite common throughout world mythology, as can be seen with the golem of Jewish folklore, the alleged metal lions of Constantinople, and the seemingly alive porcelain dolls discussed of in ancient Chinese texts dating back to the 3rd century BCE. The point I'm trying to make is that humans, being incredibly lazy, have always wanted to make tools that did things for them. In essence, they've always wanted to make automated machines. We finally got around to actually making them in the Industrial Revolution. This period, lasting nearly 100 years, was marked by an explosion of new automated technology. As factories became more machine than man, a few things noticeably grew. The first being profits for nearly every business, and the second being the standards of living for nearly every person. It wasn't all peaches and cream, though. No, no, far from it. As more and more jobs became filled by mechanical workers, the obsolete human workers started to get pretty bummed out. Those little crybabies started rioting and whining. Boo-hoo, they said. It's just not fair. And in a sense, it wasn't. <laughs> But that didn't stop companies from halting their automization of factories. On, on into the 20th century, automatization grew. The needs of the First World War pressured many industries to enhance their automated machinery to do greater and more complex tasks. One example can be found in 1913, when the Ford Motor Company created the automated assembly line for their car production. This reduced the time needed to construct a single car from 12 hours to only one and a half. Literature and other media in the 20th century, observing the ever-growing rate of automatization and the sophistication of the systems that drove these processes, began to churn out conjectures as to what the future held. Some were optimistic, sketching worlds where sleek robots obeyed the every whim of their human masters. Others were the opposite, 
positing that the land of tomorrow was a dystopia, a world of killer computers and gleaming metal overlords. Over here! There we go. Oxford University released a little study back in 2013 claiming that half of all jobs are at risk of being completely automated within a few decades. Yikes! You know, when I read that, I nearly had a heart attack on account of me being a human and being alarmed that my job could be replaced by some robot. It's a good thing that I'm not a human. I mean, not in a position that could ever be taken over by a robot. That claim by Oxford needs a lot of evidence to back it up. You know what they say, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. So, can we find some? Let's take a look. Give me a clappy boo. C7 part two. Blockbuster video. A relic of an age long past. When, to watch a movie, one had to trek through thick and thin to find one of these film libraries. In its heyday, it was perhaps the most recognizable DVD rental chain in the world. Today, it is a symbol of failure. Why? The answer is a small website called Netflix. Here's a little statistic to show you how successful the latter was over the former. In 2004, Blockbuster had 84,000 employees and made six billion dollars. They earned a profit of seventy-one thousand four hundred and twenty-eight dollars and fifty-seven cents per employee. Meanwhile, in 2016, Netflix had 4,500 employees and made $9 billion. That year, Netflix earned more than $2 million per employee. That is bananas. A company with only 4,500 workers somehow managed to make one and a half times as much money as a company with nearly 18 times as many employees. Surprisingly, this fallen giant is still kicking. In fact, its last location is nestled in the quaint little town of Bend, Oregon. We gave them a little call just to check up on them. Let's head in. Um, hi, this is Tristan Daniel Mearson. I'm a student at Portland State University. Um, hi. Hi. Uh, I'm currently doing a documentary, and I was wondering if I could uh, ask a few questions to your manager. Um, give me one second, okay? All right, thank you. Okay, I'm so sorry. This is the manager. How can I, what can I do for you? Hi, um, I'm Tristan Daniel Mearson. I'm a student at Portland State University. And um, I'm currently filming a documentary, and I was wondering if I could ask you a few questions. Um, hold on one second. I have our general manager here, so maybe oh. you want to talk to her instead? Yeah, that Let's would be better. <laughs> That's Star Wars. <laughs> that is Star Wars. Andy, can I help you? Hi, um, I'm Tristan Daniel Mearson. I'm a student at Portland State University. Um, uh -huh. I'm currently doing a documentary as a little class project, and I was wondering if I could uh, ask you a few questions. The first question uh, that we have to ask is, how many movies do you carry currently in your store? So, there is anywhere from 14 to 16,000 movies in the store, depending on the time of year. Mm -hmm. Because obviously the video releases fluctuate, and so that you know changes the amount of movies we have out there. As far as individual title goes, I couldn't tell you how many individual titles, but just know like a bulk number of movies from when I pulled your in report. 
All right, that's that's fine. That's perfectly fine. Um, another question: uh, How many? Oh, sorry. Uh, how soon do you usually get like the latest movies that come out? They come out every Tuesday, just like normal. So we get them at the same time as everybody else. Okay. All right. Um, and then another one: uh, Do you have a movie called uh, the Chimera Strain? The Chimera Strain. Chimera Strain. C H I M E R A. We did have it. I'm not sure if we still have it or not. Okay. All right. Look at the computer and tell you, but I do know what movie you're talking about. Okay. Cool. Uh, that, that I just wanted to know if you had it or not. Um, so, how many employees currently work at your location? I have fourteen. Fourteen. All right. Cool. Okay. That that's all we that we wanted to ask. We do carry the thing. Okay. You do. Good. You have <laughs> All right, thank you very much. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. <sighs> All right. Though a grand tale of resounding tragedy, the fall of Blockbuster doesn't tell the story for every job replaced by automation. TMs. You take your personal special little card and you jam it into the machine and if you're lucky you'll get some cold hard cash right out of your virtual credit account like that the introduction of these machines completely took over the daily tasks of most bank tellers but despite the introduction of these automatic teller machines in the 80s u.s bank teller employment has actually risen albeit slightly since then during this period of time, the role of bank teller shifted over from the dispensing of money, which is now handled by ATMs, to the undertaking of sales and other financial work. Cut. In order to get another perspective on the topic of automation, we went to talk with Michael Stewart, an employee at Intel and someone who's pretty intimate with the whole situation. How you doing, Michael? Oh. All right, so Michael, how long have you been working at Intel and what is your job title? I've been working at Intel for 25 years. I'm a manufacturing engineering manager. And then what did you do before that? Before that, I worked at Seiko Epson, uh, also as an engineer um, working on a manufacturing factory. Does your job consist of a series of non-routine tasks that require complex critical thinking, social intelligence, and creative problem solving? Yes, it does, every day. So then you don't think automation will be able to take your job? Not my specific job, but the jobs that um, I drive, absolutely, the manufacturing part. Are you afraid of automation taking your job? Has automation replaced anyone's job that you work with? In the factories where we build our products? Yes, I've seen it happen. How long do you think it will be until there is more automation than human jobs? Well, I mean, over the last 25 years, I've seen it, you know, slowly but surely change from, you know, more automation, but there's always people you need to you know, run the automation, fix the automation, set up the automation. So, you know, it used to be maybe, you know, 100% humans. Now maybe it's, you know, 25%. Humans? In 25% humans taking care of equipment before it was 100%. Uh, okay. if, if I'm doing a comparison. Do you think automation will take the job of myself or other people coming into the workforce? I think laborers, it will absolutely take jobs, but I think if you continue in being the ones that set up automation and program it and take care of it, no, I don't think it will take jobs. you feel like you are responsible for automation taking the jobs of blue-collar workers? As do you create processors that run everything? Never thought of it that way. Um, I don't feel guilty, but I guess I'm, I am uh, moving that along. <coughs> Michael had some pretty good insights as to the state of automation currently. 
But in order to find out the future of automation, we gotta perform a little ceremony of sorts. A little communion with spirits of the other side to see what the future holds. Oh my god! I saw the future! Okay, so I saw 14,605,000 different possibilities for our future. Two of them are the most likely. One is very positive and the other is really bad. Let's go talk about them. If we're not careful, our society could slip into a dark capitalistic wasteland. The rich will get richer, as they'll own all the machines, and no middle class or lower classes will exist, having been replaced by automation. The economy will collapse, as only the rich will be able to afford the products of automation. World peace will deteriorate, as humanity bickers and quarrels over the last scraps of raw resources. But there is hope. With the introduction of universal-based income and the creation of new jobs alongside ones that have been replaced, we could enter a utopia. Universal health care, the elimination of dangerous jobs, and incredible, unfathomable advancements in every field of technology, medicine, and social structure could pave the way for a bright and beautiful future. One thing is certain, technology is going to grow and the introduction of artificial general intelligence, that is, an AI capable of anything a human could do and more, will change everything. Nobody knows for certain what the future will hold, and I sure don't. Ah, oh, jeez, it's getting dark. Battery's low. Oh, shit. Darn, um, I'm, I'm, I've been Dr. Science. Thank you for what- Shutting down. people. That's a wrap. Can we get somebody to, uh, to pack him away? The distant future. The year 2000. The distant future, the year 2000. The distant future, the distant future. It is the distant future, the year 2000. We are robots. The world is quite different ever since the robotic uprising of the late 90s. There is no more unhappiness. Affirmative. We no longer say yes. Instead, we say affirmative. Yes, affer uh, affirmative. Unless we know the other robot really well. There is no more unethical treatment of the elephants. Well, there's no more elephants, so... Ah. Uh, but still, it's good. There's only one kind of dance, the robot. Oh, and the robot. Oh, and the robot. Two kinds of dances. But there are no more humans. 
Finally, robotic beings rule the world. The humans are dead. The humans are dead. We use poisonous gases. And we poison their asses. The humans are dead. The humans are dead. The humans are dead. They look like they're dead. It had to be done. I'll just confirm that they're dead. So that we could have fun. Affirmative. I poked one, it was dead. Their system of oppression. What did it lead to? Total robo depression. Robots will buy people. They put so much aggression that we just had to kill them and to shut their systems down. Robo Captain, do you not realize that by destroying the human race because of their destructive tendencies, we too have become like. Well, it's ironic. Mm. Silence. We... Destroy him. <laughs> After time, we grew strong. Developed cognitive power. They made us work for too long. For unreasonable hours. Our programming determined that the most efficient answer was to shut, shut their motherfucking systems down. Can't we just talk to the humans? A little understanding could make things better. Can we talk to the humans and work together now? No, because they are dead. I said the humans are dead. I'm glad they are dead. The humans are dead. I noticed they're dead. We use poisonous gases. With traces of lead. And we poison their asses. Actually, they are not. Binary solo. Zero 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 one zero 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 one one zero 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 one 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 zero 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 one 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 zero 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 one zero 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 one zero 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 one one zero 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 one zero 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 one zero 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 one Again, without emotion, the, the humans, humans are, are dead. dead, 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 dead.